Hey everyone, Jasper here. I wanted to show off Sigil, what it looks like physically, uh, as well as some of the premium and add-on components that you can get with the game. Um, so this is Sigil. The box is uh, about 11 and a half by 11 and a half inches. Um, really good shelf presence, especially for a two-player dueling game. I and mean, we really love this. Um, Mike Nath did a great job with the graphic design. Spent a lot of time on it. It's like this rich, deep purple um, that actually stands out really well um, on a game shelf. Um, just sort of looks a little bit like mysterious, um, you know, when you're looking at sort of one of the sides or the front um, without sort of being overwhelming and, and jarring. Um, it's a really nice design there. This is, of course, a prototype copy, um, but as we like to do when we go to Kickstarter, all of our games are fully designed um, from a gameplay perspective, graphic design perspective, things like that, which means shorter time to print, which means shorter time and less risk to get it in your hands. Um, so here's the box. And the reason why the box has to be this size um, is because of the game board. So we have this quad fold um, game board. You can see it folds quad fold um, that is about 19 inches. Um, and the reason uh, that it's 19 inches, we spent some time thinking about that um, is because of sort of the use case of how we think it's gonna be played. So it fits really well on like a coffee table. Um, if you go to a pub, a lot of those round tabletops um, are between 22 and 24 inches. Um, so it's a really nice sort of impactful game, um, especially for a two player dueling game, like really good table presence. Um, without being overwhelming. It's not gonna take up your entire kitchen table, um, but you know, it's it's a nice nice game to play on, uh, sort of nice comfortable size um, when you're sitting down to play with your friends. Uh, next up we have the spells. So the spells are uh, really cool, um, two millimeter thick um, stock, um, I think two millimeter, not two and a half, um, but really, really good thickness um, sort of stock. We have the 15 spells that come with the game. Um, so here are the five node spells. There's five five node spells. Um, there's five three node spells. Um, and then we have uh, five one node spells that come with the base game. Um, there was one comment on the Kickstarter page about uh, what about people having sort of cont uh, contests for people in the Kickstarter to design a spell? Um, I really love that, that idea. I think it's a really, really fun idea. Um, because of our philosophy of having everything ready uh, before we launch the Kickstarter so that we can get the game to you a lot faster. And also because of how we have um, sort of the punch board set up um, for the game, there's not room for more spells in the base game. Um, we have to expand the box size because the box is designed to have to the right depth. It's 60 millimeters, so it's the right depth to have the spells stacked with the board stacked on top. Um, and it would also take a while um, because you'd have to test the spell uh, as well as do all of the graphic design on the spell um, for it to make it in the base game. But I still think it's a really good idea. Um, we have other spells designed that we want to get into people's hands you know, in the future, um, but adding more spells would increase sort of the production costs and the cost of the game. So we aren't doing that right now, but our plan is to have more spells and I'd love to get sort of ideas for spells and have a community design spell. Um, so probably next week I'll sort of roll something out um, for that. But for now, uh, this is about components. So here are uh, the spells, um, you know, really nice fit on the board. Well, now we want Sigil to feel very premium. You know, it's a two player dueling game. Um, but we want it to sort of be a really nice tactile two-player dueling game. So the glass beads, um, you know, are glass beads. Um, they're nice glass beads that come with every game. Um, you have the red and the blue. Um, and then what I really love is the custom metal dice. Um, so uh, you have the custom metal dice are sort of really nice. Um, we have the die molds made for them. These are sort of prototype components, but the six-sided custom metal dice as one of the, the stretch goals that isn't revealed yet. Um, so, but that's that. Um, so what do the, the beads and dice come in or how do you store them in the base game? Um, so just in the base game, um, also a stretch goal that I'm not too worried about and Kickstarter is still pretty early, um, is you have these felt bags um, that are uh, embroidered felt bags. And if we don't hit the stretch goal, um, for the bags, uh, for the embroidered felt, then you know we'll either do basic felt or plastic bags, which will be totally fine to store the components. Um, but this sort of adds a really nice feel to the game when you're playing. You take these out of the box, and it sort of like feels feels really nice. 
Um, so the ba bags have the two uh, sort of competing symbols for the two, the two sides on the game. Now, there's been a lot of questions about um, the, the hex boxes. So I wanna show off um, the hex boxes, that Ra the prototype hex boxes that Ravenwood uh, made up for us. And we actually have two different um, wood types. These are the cherry wood. Um, so I'll take some pictures of these two. Uh, but we have custom uh, designed etched onto them for the game. Um, now, boxes aren't cheap to make. Um, these are, you know, lined with full letter. We also have black walnut. Um, so we're actually going to ha be having a vote. So actually vote in the comments um, whether you want us, the hex boxes, to be black walnut or cherry. Um, and uh, whichever, whichever gets more votes at the end of the campaign is what the entire run will be. Um, it's easier that way, but you know, we have the, this one you can't really see it with the angle, uh, but we have the, the cherry wood and the black walnut boxes, um, magnetic, um, and then lined, so, and also padded. Um, so really nice feeling when you're playing and you're sitting and you have these beads um, that you're taking out of this box, you just, you feel like a king, right? You just feel like this is, you know, pour me, uh, pour me a fancy cocktail with like elderflower or something and let me take these glass beads and put them on the board. Um, it just feels really nice um, when you're fiddling with these in the game, especially when you also have, um, you know, that, that nice heavy, these are, this, di this die is heavy, um, that nice heavy, heavy metal die. Um, so, you know, it's a really nice feeling sort of components. I love these. Um, Ravenwood is um, a Washington state um, company. Um, family owned. Um, we really wanted to partner with people on these who sort of we trust in the industry. They have a really good reputation um, and could make sort of these boxes really well. Um, so fulfillment of the boxes is actually a little bit different because the base game is, is made overseas. Um, that's sort of where it's most economical for us and we can offer a game that is a for affordable, affordable for people. Um, the hex boxes are handmade um, in the US um, and they will be fulfilled um, from Ravenwood. Um, so people have asked about the price of these. Um, you know, if you go to the store and you get these wooden hex boxes, you know, you can probably get some, you know, some cheaper ones on Etsy, but these are big. Um, so these are bigger than sort of your normal dice boxes that you see, um, custom size. Um, the custom engraving, you know, it takes time on an etching machine um, for them all to be engraved um, for everyone. And, you know, these would normally go for like 55 dollars each um which is you know 110 um we're offering them you know for 100 um so a little bit uh, more affordable um although i understand that this type of component is not in everyone's price range which is totally fine um you know i often don't go for the premium components on games also but i know that there are some people who would really appreciate that um, and we want it for as an option for you um you want it as an option. So that's why there's the price that it is. Um, you know, they're not cheap to make, they're handmade, um, hand, you know, on putting the piece of wood on the machine, uh, custom, custom etched, all of that. Um, so that is the hex boxes. And again, we have the two different types of wood. Uh, so we have the cherry and the black walnut. Um, and let us know in the comments, even if you aren't at this tier, um, these will be up online afterwards. You might want them someday. Um, so let us know in the comments whether you want the black walnut or the cherry wood, um, and that's what we'll make the whole um, the whole run out of. Um, now, uh, the neoprene neoprene game board. Um, so this is the same size as the the quad fold board, um, but it's neoprene. Um, so you can roll it up, um, put it in your backpack. Um, it's a nice neoprene. It's stitched along the edge so you won't get any tearing and there's less wear, um, you know. Uh, what I often do uh, when I am playing the game, I'm going to play the game with the friends, is I will put, um, throw the spells in a Ziploc bag, um, throw these in the backpack, and then this rolled up in the backpack. And then instead of bringing the box around um, and the quad fold board, which does, again, take up most of the space, um, I'm just bringing, you know, this rolled up and this is the game board. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's actually the same size. Yeah, I, th I thought we made a tiny bit. No, it's the same, exact same size as the game board. Um, and again, you know, stitched on the edge. Um, and I just want to show people, you know, how this looks when in person. It's so, like, it's this game has so much table presence. You know, we'll be playing it 
even before we got all this graphic design done, but especially after, um, you know, we'll be playing it, you know, at a coffee shop and people come up and comment are like, oh my gosh, what is this thing? Because it has so much table presence. Um, so uh, I wanted to show it off, um, but yeah, neoprene uh, game board. Uh, we're also adding this and the base game as its own pledge tier. Um, so this is $64. You could already do that with this as an add-on. So if you already had this as an add-on, um, then don't worry about changing your pledge. It's the exact same thing about doing the next pledge tier, but we had a lot of questions in terms of how can I just get uh, one or the other of the add-ons? Um, so this is now a new option. So you can get the neoprene, neoprene game board um, as well as the base game um, for $64 as an add-on. Um, there's one more thing that I wanted to show off. Um, and this is for the super premium um, tier, um, pledge tier, collector edition, pledge tier. Um, so there's two differences with that. You One, you get the base game, the neoprene play mat. Uh, but there's two other things that we're adding. Um, one of them we don't have in hand yet. Um, it was actually a very big process to figure out how to manufacture it. Um, and that is... Um, Sorry, I'm in New York, so there's a siren going on in the background. Um, and that is the lacquered game box. Um, so I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with what a lacquered finish is, um, but we're making a, a, a limited print run um, custom game box that's wooden. It's a wooden game box with, magnet, with magnets on it, um, and then it's lacquered finish. So you might know lacquered um, from, it's like this, this she, this like um, shiny smooth finish um, that can go on top of um, on top of really you can put it on anything right it's, it's a it's a type of varnish um, but you have to it's very specific how you do it, it has to be in a in a clean room um, and you know it's it's a very sensitive process to make um, and then printing on wood is also not um, the easiest thing to do um, so uh, we, we looked really hard to figure out the best way to manufacture these games. Um, and we're making a custom, it looks different than this. It's gonna have more of a table presence. It's a little bit bigger because the internal dimensions are the same and wood is of course thicker than the card stock. Um, and it's a di slightly different purple, won't have the barcode, won't have any of the age range, things like that, custom designed. Um, actually, the inspiration of this whole sort of collector's edition, um, Jonathan Adler, who is a potter, um, a, a famous pottery uh, designer who also makes furniture and art and has some really high-end stores. Um, they have um, lacquered finish um, backgammon sets and I love backgammon. I play a lot of backgammon um, and I don't have one. Um, they're really expensive. Um, the bo Their backgammon sets are a couple hundred dollars like um, on their own um, and there's a lot less than you get with, with Sigil. Um, but they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, I've seen them on you know a sideboard um, and it's, it's a piece of art. Um, so for the collector's edition, um, we're doing a limited run, um, really just a piece of art. Um, and, you know, uh, to be honest, it's, it's expensive to make. Like, we're not, um, like, making money on, uh, or any real money on, on this thing. It's just that's how much it costs, you know. So we're doing a limited print run, um, and, and it costs a lot of money to, to make the custom dies. Um, the way that they print it um, is, uh, I'll do a whole other thing. Actually, let's get into it. So the way that they print it is, is you can print the whole outside of, of these boxes, um, and then you have to have custom printing a machinery, or not custom printing machinery, um, but the way it works, I forget the name of it right now, um, but have you ever seen those videos of people making like factories and making like ceramic plates where there's like this bubble that dips in the ink and then slides over and can print on these uneven surfaces? Um, that's the printing method. Um, and that's a very specific printing method um, because th all the other printing methods that you can do on wood add a very slight raise. Um, so a lot of a lot of wooden products that you'll see um, will have like a vinyl layer on it and they have to coat the entire thing um, because you have this sort of like vinyl 
layer finish on top and that is can be subject to chipping it's not quite as good or if you just do like a spot application then you'll have like a very small raised surface um, which we didn't want um, the other way that you can do it is there is um uh, there are printing machines that, that are recessed printing um, where basically instead of running like paper underneath this printing machine um, you can have between like four and six inches deep items that get set in it um, so you can imagine you can sort of change how high it goes um, but those also have to use a special ink that also has depth to it and is also sort of at risk for chipping so to make this um, this 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 lacquer finish box that we want um, we have to you know have a, they, we, had, we had to source the right facility um, to be able to, to print it how we actually want it printed um, and then line it with with a nice internal liner um, and all of that um, so we don't have those actually made up yet um, but I'm really excited about those um, really limited print run um, but but really really excited about it um, what we're also doing for that pledge tier is Ravenwood is making custom um, uh, epoxy and live edge wood hex boxes. So I don't know if you can see this that well, but these are live edge black walnut. Um, and then the rest of it is this epoxy. Um, so these are also, you know, these are also, you know, expensive to make, right? They have to, um, Rob over at Ravenwood has to, uh, and Jen, um, they have to, you know, machine all of these hex boxes, uh, individually. Um, and then, applying making the resin so it it's to form um and then letting it cure it, it takes a lot of space it's a precise process it's not easy to do um which is one of the reasons we wanted to work with ravenwood is because you know they have these capabilities and they're real artisans um where they can make these sort of really nice looking um this really nice looking product that like like look this is like look it's beautiful it's a beautiful product um so that's that's what the uh, the that sort of premium collector edition pledge tier is limited edition. Um, my gut is most people are going to be getting sort of the base game or the base game. Uh, this prototype doesn't have the box back right now, uh, but the base game or the base game with either one or two of the add-ons. Um, and again, vote in the comments if you like the ch look of the cherry wood or if you like the look of the black walnut better. Um, and and that's, you know, that's what we'll be doing for the entire print run. So thank you all so much um, for all of the support so far, for being a part of the Sigil uh, campaign. And um, keep on casting some spells. Look forward to seeing, all, seeing you all out there.